Go to Uganda now where President Yoweri Museveni has given a keynote address at the second Uganda International Oil and Gas Summit in Kampala. The summit is hosted by the Ministry of Energy and Mineral Development. The timing of the summit is of major importance to Uganda as it moves forward towards commercial oil production with major projects under discussion. The summit will also discuss and debate the future of oil and gas exploration and production in Uganda. A timely meeting for senior policy makers, global investors, oil and gas companies, lawyers, consultants and other stakeholders to find out more about the state of exploration and production as it is now uh, has challenges and opportunities that lie ahead. Right, I understand we have our Solomon Serwanjo on the line for us. Uh, Solomon, uh, good uh, afternoon and thank you for joining us. What more can you tell us about this meet? Well, a very good afternoon to you. President Chair M70 did grace this summit today at the Kampala Serena Conference Center. And he emphasized three things, that by 2020, oil should be able to flow out of the different oil wells and that Uganda should be able to take advantage of this oil. Of course, prospects are that we will have a refinery constructed here in Uganda to be able to process the oil so that Uganda can benefit from that. President Jerry Museveni also spoke against exporting this oil uh, to other countries for it to be refined, rather looking at it as an opportunity that Uganda can use to move to a middle income state. However, he did emphasize that the country should not only, or should not only look at oil as the only source of revenue through which it can use to develop but it can only be seen as a part of the puzzle and or part of the many options that are available including commercializing of agriculture and industrialization right uh, solomon and what about engagement with other countries in as far as oil is concerned because it is one thing in as far as transportation and ensuring there is export of the same uh, are those issues being discussed well, I'll tell you this, that um, Tanzania was greatly represented here, especially that the oil pipeline goes through there. You remember the row that was there between Uganda and Kenya and Uganda and Tanzania, where should the oil pipeline pass? But eventually, uh, of course, Tanzania took the day. However, the, it is the East African community and more so that the oil that Uganda has discovered will be used not only for Uganda, but also for the region at large. We've seen different uh, investors in the oil field coming for this summit, many of them are looking at the different opportunities there are to invest in this country, not only in the exploitation of the oil, but also in the other service sectors like, for example, setting up of hotels around the places where the oil was discovered, and of course investing heavily in, um, you know, the, 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 the different, uh, for example, welding of, of, of the pipes that will be used in the extraction, among others. However, the president did come out very, very clearly today saying that certainly oil should be looked at as a blessing for the region, not as a curse. Because many times in African countries especially, we see that issue of such, uh, whether it's oil or other minerals, becoming a curse. And here in Kenya, just recently, there's now a bill before the Senate on local content, and that's to ensure that communities in these regions where, say, for example, oil is being gotten, are able to benefit. In Uganda, do they have those kind of systems and laws in place to make sure that these especially big companies from outside don't come and take all of the jobs, the money, and at the end of the day, the locals don't feel, uh, you know, the benefits of this uh, kind of uh, extractive commodities? Well, I'll tell you this. I'll tell you this, that the people of Bunyoro, of Bunyoro sub-region, where this oil was uh, discovered, many of them are complaining that they will not take advantage of the oil from their region because of the current policies and laws. However, the government has uh, allayed this fear, saying that it's a given portion of the money that will be gotten from uh, this industry will be to benefit uh, the people, the local people, through construction of schools, construction of hospitals. Matter of fact, that those who will be exploiting this oil will be one of the part of the contract is construct uh, such uh, social enterprises like schools and hospitals I'll tell you this I think it's a, it's 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 a catch-22 here the question is can Uganda be able to refine its own oil can Uganda be able to take advantage of this oil through for example um, purifying it it can't so it needs someone or these companies like Sinoc like Total to be able to do that yes the complaints have been there that maybe these big companies 
countries will be just taking the money away from Uganda and to take it back to their countries. However, uh, there, are, there are some uh, bits in the contracts that tie them to perhaps invest much more here home in, uh, in Uganda and also to give employment to the different people, uh, local people most importantly, especially both casual laborers but also uh, to tap into the white collar jobs. Just to let you know, Uganda has invested heavily in, um, in, in developing uh, capacity, for example, uh, there have been several scholarships that have been given to Ugandans to go and study bachelor's degrees in oil and gas, master's degree in oil and gas to prepare to take advantage of the opportunities that come so that we don't have to just import exporters, uh, to import, sorry, experts from out to come and manage the resources here in Uganda. All right. Thank you so much, uh, Solomon Serwanja, for that comprehensive update. We now have a clearer uh, perspective of the goings-on in as far as this uh, oil uh, summit. Uh